Today I'm going to show you something very unique, something you won't see on any other channel and something that I'm pretty positive hasn't been done directly before. So I am going to utilize a reverse diffusion model and it is a neural network. We're going to utilize it to predict a data set. Like, a, like a, in this instance, I'm going to create a Fibonacci sequence data set and we're going to predict this data set utilizing just pure diffusion, reverse diffusion in this instance. I generally on this channel try to stay away from philosophy discussions and focus on physics-based discussions. To me, philosophy and physics are the same road. It's, it's um, just one end of the road compared to the other. Um, philosophy is where you build your hypotheses and then once you get to physics, that's where you have tested hypotheses that are actually validated in the real world and they're a part of science. And so, uh, I generally, speaking just in general, try to stay uh, in public conversations like on that, that scientific side of the road as opposed to the philosophical one. When it comes to this particular discussion, though, we're doing an experiment that is uh, off the rails. There is not a um, physics equivalent uh, within this. So uh, we have to, like, we're going, uh, there are no roads where we're going. <laughs> so uh, we have to ground this particular discussion and a bit of philosophy as opposed to physics. So let's do that. And so, but it also is a physics discussion of philosophy. <laughs> uh, within this, we have the concept of uh, noise versus signal, right? And then so uh, within any data set or within anything, you have noise and you have signal. And my philosophical argument within this is that the definition of a signal is subjective and it depends on the specific context and what we as humans define it to be. What I mean by this is that signal in any data set um, is uh, it's a variable. <laughs> it's set by the person, right? What is important to you? That's signal. What is irrelevant to you? That's noise. Uh, and then that can change and vary from person to person and from situation to situation. So signal is in and of itself a human construct and signal is based on our goals and our interests. So what's considered signal in one situation might be considered noise in a completely different situation. Just looking at a few like real world examples of this. First example would be eavesdropping, right? So if you're trying to secretly listen to a conversation across a crowded room, that conversation becomes your signal. Everything else, the other people talking, the music, the clinking of glasses, anything else that's going on in that room is noise because it interferes with your goal of hearing that conversation directly across the room. However, if you're at the same party, simply enjoying the ambiance, the mix of the conversations, the music and the clinking of glasses, these things might be considered the signal. And so the overall atmosphere that you're there for. And so in that case, a single isolated conversation might be seen as the noise and it's distracting you. <laughs> that uh, conversation across the room is exactly what you don't want to hear. Right? And then so in those these two different situations, we have two very different meanings of signal and noise with the same exact variables. So second example of this would be studying bird songs. So a biologist studying the songs of a particular bird species would consider the sounds produced by that species to be the signal. Other sounds like wind, other animal noises, or any other human-made noises, those would be noise. But an environmental scientist studying the overall landscape of a forest might consider all natural sounds, and including the bird songs, and that would be signal, while the human-made sounds would be noise. And a third example, just making it crystal clear, so an astronomer looking for a specific type of star might define the light emitted by that star as the signal. Light from other stars, galaxies, and even the Earth's atmosphere might be considered noise. And another astronomer studying that cosmic microwave background radiation, kind of like the afterglow of the Big Bang, they'd consider that faint radiation to be the signal itself. And so all the stars and all the galaxies would be noise, and that's what would need to be removed. And so the key takeaway within this is that the distinction between signal and noise is arbitrary, and it's based on our perspective. And it highlights the fact that one, 
Meaning is context dependent. So what is meaningful or signal dependent depends on what we're trying to achieve or to understand. And two, human interpretation is the key here. That's the variable that we're trying to play to in all instances. We define what is important and what's not, and those definitions can change. So in the context of this code that we're going to look at, even in the code, the Fibonacci pattern is the signal because we define it as such. <laughs> I, I literally define it uh, as our signal in the code, and I'll show you that. And then so we could have chosen a different pattern or even just a pure random numbers as the signal. And the experiment would have been about separating that as opposed to the specific signal that we're going to experiment with. So the bottom line is, is that the concepts of Signal and noise are incredibly useful, but they're ultimately tools for us to make sense of the world. Recognizing their subjective nature is crucial for understanding how we interpret data and how we design experiments or build systems that interact with the world around us. So with this in mind, this gets us into a very specific um, what I want to highlight within this overall is that we can utilize diffusion and diffusion models in very unique and unexplored ways. In this particular instance, I've created a, a high dimensional structured data set. In this instance, it's a Fibonacci data set. So I, I have just um, a golden ratio numbers and then just random golden ratio numbers. And then so I generate that as the input. And then in this instance, I do a forward diffusion process, right? So what that means is forward diffusion means that I'm just adding noise to this data set. And then not only am I just adding like random noise, because that, that, like you can do that and, and, and it would be kind of easy maybe to uh, differentiate random noise as opposed to like our Fibonacci numbers, right? So I'm... Uh, applying structured noise in this instance. So our data set is Fibonacci numbers. My noise that I'm adding to it is fudged Fibonacci numbers, like like tweaked Fibonacci numbers. And so that they're like they're just like a little bit wrong. Um but close to the actual thing. And that's that's how I'm structuring the data, right? Like I want it to be like like uh, I'm trying to like fool the model in this instance a little bit, right? And then so then I have uh we do that and we do this noise and then we, we apply the noise to this and then we're applying the noise in time steps. So uh, uh, here's the original data, time step one, here's some noise, time step two, here's some no more noise, time step three, more noise, four, five, six, seven, like up to let's say 100. And then, then we're taking our uh, reverse a diffusion model. And then what I'm doing with the model is that the model is it doesn't get access to the data set whatsoever. So it doesn't know uh, that it's Fibonacci numbers. It doesn't know anything like 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 its first iteration, iteration one that the model gets is just 100% noise. And then so uh, that's all it, all it is, is just like, like, a, like a pure static, right? Uh, and then iteration two is uh, time step 99 with one step of noise removed. And then iteration three is time step 98 with two pieces of noise removed, right? And then that's what the model is learning and predicting off of. And then so it's essentially trying to predict like, like um, what's, what is the sequence here if I remove the noise? What's the pattern, right? And then that's all uh, essentially all we're doing here. And then we evaluate the model performance. Very simple, like a very simplistic um, setup and experiment here, right? Um, and then what we can see is, is that just based off of this, the, the model scores very well, right? Like it, 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 it um, there is some loss here, but the model is, is uh, predicting and it's accurately reconstructing uh, this image, right? Uh, like uh, in this instance, it's this data set of, of Fibonacci sequence numbers. Uh, and then so let's just take this a step further since this is super cool and, and let's like build this out uh, to the, like I like to like, you know, take things like Mythbusters, right? So uh, we, we've, now we've proven this concept. Wow, this is amazing. We can actually just utilize noise and, and flat out noise and, and denoise into signal <laughs> in this instance is what we're doing, right? Uh, and, 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 to, uh, and the model doesn't, is not given signal itself. It's just denoising until it, it makes signal <laughs> that, that, that we have previously defined that the model has no idea what we previously defined as signal. And so 
With this next experiment, like we're, we're taking it up a notch, right? So we uh, essentially, we uh, have our, uh, like a little bit um, stronger model, basically. Um, and then so I have it uh, like uh, more dimensions, um, more uh, training epochs, more time steps, create the same data set. And then uh, like making sure like in this instance, I, I create even like, like, like more structure to it, right? Like very structured equation. Like, like this is like, like I want this noise to like be like Fibonacci noise <laughs> like like very close right <clears throat> and then generate the data set uh and then we have our essentially the the, the uh, same process where we're doing that denoising process so uh i essentially in this instance i'm actually structuring this diffusion model as a neural network. And that's the major primary difference here, right? So we've taken this concept and we've proven that like just through like pure diffusion, we, we can do this. But so I can like, why not like, well, okay, I can take this pure diffusion process and then I can I can structure it and shape it um, like a neural network, right? I can give it layers, I can give it dimensions, uh, I can give it uh, a, 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 a like a, a gradient to, to train off of, etc. Right? Optimizer, everything that I need in order for it to, to um, function. I can convert it to Pi, to PyTorch tensors as I do in this particular instance, etc. Right. And then so uh, from this, we just uh, build our training process and then we're doing that same thing where we uh, are creating the noise and then we, we uh, are just uh, training the model on this denoise process. But then in this instance, we're training this full neural network, right? So it's, it's, it's essentially going through and doing the data set, transforming the data set, transforming this into actual images, into a PCA projection. like. Uh, Going like this is a full production model, right? This is exactly what you would do um, in production to illustrate and highlight this concept. And then uh, going through here, I run it for uh, 100 epochs, right? And then the loss is is I mean this model learns, it cooks, uh, starts off at three uh, and then goes down to 0.6. We do have uh, some loss, right? Like it's not lossless. This is not a lossless approach. Although, I mean, there's definitely things that I could do to improve this here. Uh, we're at like 97.5%. Uh, I, I mean, that's pretty good, right? Um, and then we can see like that's kind of how it matches up here. Uh, and then here, uh, and then here, right? So uh, we can see like original versus restored. We're getting really close, <laughs> like, and and in a lot of instances where we're, I'm going to highlight this up for here too, where we seem to be having kind of like the most deviations is uh, towards the edges, right? Like so, like uh, uh, towards the like the, uh, just the very edges of the the dimensions of, of the data set. So uh, the zero and like uh, looking at this like that that 350 the edge. Uh, in those instances, it's it's uh, like more deviation as opposed to the center. I have hypotheses um, as to um, why that is and what's going on there, but I'm just highlighting that in this video and, and showcasing that and illustrating this. But so bottom line here, what we've done is proven out this philosophical concept that I went over at the top of this video here, right? So. What is a signal versus what is noise is subjective. In this instance, uh, both like like what we did is we created a model uh, and then we utilized noise, which was just numbers and numbers, and we just fed the model to essentially learn to extract the numbers that we didn't want and then only focus on the numbers that we did want. And then in this instance, we the numbers that we did want were very specifically the Fibonacci sequence, and we, we very specifically defined that up front, but we didn't let the model know any of that in this in any of these experiments. It's kind of like the, the bottom line, the key part of this, right? <laughs> the model never knows that it's the Fibonacci sequence uh, and it's going through. It's just training. It's just denoising. Uh, it's just trained on here's a bunch of noise and then here's progressively less noise. Uh, and then it eventually is able to test out and <clears throat> and then it creates signal in this instance, which again, we are, are artificially defined the signal. So the model isn't creating any signal. It's not predicting the actual signal, but its predictions create signal. And then that's kind of the unique thing within this, right? And that's kind of like the unique ending philosophical concept within this is like, um, so what's the difference between like synthetic signal and uh, actual signal? Because that's what's going on here, right? Is that these models are creating synthetic signal. Uh, and then in this instance, like there's not an actual real world difference between synthetic signal and actual signal. Who cares? It, it, it 
as long as you get to the result, we can utilize anything to get signal. We're showing here, use, literally just utilizing the laws of physics and reverse diffusion in this instance to crunch through equations, crunch through numbers, and find the patterns in those numbers. If you like this type of content, you won't find it anywhere else. Please like and subscribe.